Hi, so today I wanted to do a video on some things that God is really placing on my heart to share. And I've talked about this before, but I really just wanted to go more in depth about how God doesn't look at us as broken projects that need to be fixed. So I felt like this for so long in my life. I felt like God looked at me in that way. And a lot of times within Christianity, we hear certain verses being interpreted. And we may think that we are just these endless self-reflection improvement projects. Now, I believe with God that there is this beautiful process that happens. I've talked about letting go. I want to talk about rest. I want to talk about learning just to sit at the Lord's feet. And rest at him. Now, I'll probably go deeper in depth into this topic, but it's a very quite vast topic that I can really expound upon in a lot of ways. But I want to talk about learning how to rest in God's love for us. Now, I'm going to take you to a verse in the book of Jeremiah. Or it might be Isaiah first, and then um, I have a verse in Jeremiah. It's from chapter 14 in the book of Isaiah. And it talks about a rest from bondage. And it's verse 3. And it says, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Now, we see something really similar in the book of the Israelites where God had freed the Israelites from Egyptian captivity, but he wanted to free them from spiritual captivity. And we see God repeatedly commanding them to set aside a day of rest. And there's a spiritual significance to this. He was trying to show them he alone was the provision. He alone was where their rest came from. That they couldn't work for it. They couldn't do it themselves, that their rest came from God. And we see this when Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. That our rest comes from him and him alone, not our own works, not our own efforts, but his perfect finished work of the cross. Now, if we compare that essentially from the story of the Israelites to talking about the New Testament and Jesus when he was on this earth, people were trying so hard to follow the law. And we even see that with the Israelites. People were trying so hard to follow the law. Jesus came to give them rest. to set them free from the law. Now, why am I talking about this? Because so often we as Christians, 
we look at our walk with God, we look at our relationship with God, and we think that we need to work. We need to work. If we're not working, God is looking down on us, or God is upset at us. And I'm not saying works won't be a part of being a Christian. But I believe there's a reason rest is mentioned all throughout the Bible, all the way from the very beginning, all the way into the New Testament. Because rest is mentioned repeatedly, it must be important to God. So we see this reoccurring theme, this central reoccurring theme of rest. I love this verse in particular in Isaiah. It's, it's Isaiah 14, 3. So the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. I don't know about you, but since I was very young, I've had a lot of fear of God or fear of going to hell. And that was there for a very, very long time. Um, five years old till I was like 23 or so. We feel like we need to live in all this fear, especially if it feels really strong. This verse specifically said that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, from thy fear. That we don't have to fear him for eternity. That there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts it out fear. So Jesus' perfect love casts it out fear. That there is no fear in his love. I talk about this all the time, but Jesus bore all the wrath of God. God's not angry at us. And the book of Isaiah talks about the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So many times as a Christian, we're taught to just constantly look at our works, what we're doing for God, to focus on our sin or what we're struggling with. And so often we think that God looks at us as these endless self-reflection improvement projects or as broken projects that need to be fixed. I believe God sees his child. God sees our pain. The things that we have been carrying on our shoulders, the things that we try to do with our own efforts, our own ability. And we've got wants us to know the rest we have in him. That he doesn't want us to carry all our pain and worries and burdens on our shoulders. That he sees how heavy it is. He sees how weary we are. That's why Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And it's not just a temporary rest that we receive when we come to the Lord, but I believe it's an eternal rest that we have in Him. Not just in eternity one day, but here on this earth as believers.
we see in the book of Jeremiah. No, it's not Jeremiah, no, sorry. But I love it. I'm going to read it anyways. So first I'm going to um, read Jeremiah 30.10. It says, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. I just love that so much. I was reading that one day, and I was just like, wow, that's just amazing. I love this verse as a reminder, you know, he is the one who has saved us. He is the one who has redeemed us from our spiritual captivity, right? When we were looking to the law, even though it couldn't save, right? But it showed us our sin. The law shows us our sin. The gospel shows us our savior. And I love that. It says, and shall be in rest and be quiet. And I, I think about that. Shall be in rest and, and, and be still. And none shall make him afraid. And then we look at Jeremiah 31 talks about God's everlasting love, and it says, At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. So we see this theme of rest again. It says, that Even as I when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord longs for us to know the rest we have in Him. That's why it's in the beginning of the Bible, all the way out throughout the Bible. That's why we see the Israelites, and God repeatedly commands them to set aside a day of rest, where they will do no work. And even certain verses of the Bible. Or certain versions of the Bible, if I didn't say versions, will use the word deny yourselves. I believe it's in the NIV version. In Leviticus 23, it says, deny yourselves and do no work. So we see there, denying yourself is about doing no work. It's about resting. It's about not looking to your works, but resting. I want to talk about Isaiah, or sorry, Jeremiah 50, verse 6. 
It says, my people hath been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. And I love that word so much. <laughs> he is our resting place. He is our resting place. He is where our rest comes from. So if we get back into the topic of how I believe God doesn't look at us as broken projects that need to be fixed. I want you to hear these words, these words directly from scripture, directly from his word. And I want you to remind it of the rest that he longs for us to have. To rest in Jesus' perfect finish with the cross. That we cannot save ourselves. That there is no rest found in ourselves. And that God longs for us to know the rest we have in Him. Now, getting back to the topic God doesn't look at us as broken projects that need to be fixed, He longs to give us rest. And he sees his children. He sees us, his children. When we minimize our pain and the things we're going through, God is the one that acknowledges that. in times of my life where I didn't understand the topic of rest or why God was teaching me it repeatedly and why it was the central recurring thing that kept coming up in my life. I didn't understand the spiritual significance of it in the Bible or even in my own life and what God was trying to teach me at the time. But all the times that I looked at myself as someone that needed to be fixed or thought God saw me in that way, God God didn't see me in that way. In the church, we think that God is the one pointing out everything we're doing wrong. The Bible talks about God is love. I want to say God is love. God is love. I believe God, He is the one that longs to meet us in His love. Because he knows that is the only thing that can change us. Yes, I believe that. The power of God's love is the only thing that can really change us. Now, granted, we are talking about the topic of rest. But it's in that place of rest. When we are resting with the Lord, and when we are just coming to the Lord and sitting at his feet, it's in that place of rest. That is so huge for us. It's in that place of rest where we are we are reminded of the resting place of God's love. That it is a resting place.
I believe God wants us to come as we are. That he longs to meet us in his love. It's been in my deepest times of shame where God has met me in his grace. I believe that is how God sees us, through eyes of grace, through eyes of love, through eyes of mercy. And I believe this beautiful process happens when we're in that place of rest. That the Lord longs to minister to our hearts. And it not only provides healing and reaches those wounds that, that we've carried in our lives, but that when we are filled with His love, We don't want to fill ourselves. We don't want to fill the emptiness that we feel that we feel with all these other things that may be detrimental or harmful to us in some way. And it can be a number of things. I also believe in that process that the things that we may struggle with or the sins that we try so hard to stop doing through our own efforts, our own ability, or part of our own ability, our own efforts, that in that process, His love is what transforms our hearts and changes them and renews them from the inside out. And I believe he longs to do this work in us. Because when we're being filled with that love, too, that is what will flow out. And it won't be through our own efforts. It'll be his supernatural love. His Holy Spirit working in us. I believe God longs to do this work in us. For us to know the rest we have in Him. That's why I believe rest is mentioned all throughout the Bible. But we see this happening in the story of Mary and Martha. And Martha is busy trying to think of all the things that she needs to do for God or for Jesus. And I find it interesting. I said, Martha had received Jesus into her house, right? But she was still busy working. And then we see Mary. Mary just sits at Jesus' feet and receives him and is just resting in him and being with him. And I really, truly believe that he longs to be with us in this way. I can't imagine how happy the Lord was just to spend time with Mary and, and be with her and probably ministering to her and teaching her things. The Lord longs for that kind of relationship with us. Where we just sit, where we just rest at his feet. And it doesn't mean we don't do things for God. We still follow his leading and guiding in our lives. But it's from this place of rest, right? It's from knowing the rest that we have in Jesus' perfect finished work at the cross. It's from knowing the rest that we have in him that, that we can rest in his love. We can learn to come to the Lord just as we are. He's our Heavenly Father, right? Paul talks about how he, He's our Abba. Not that we would live 
and the spirit of fear, but that we cry, Abba, Father, that he sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I want us to understand from the standpoint of, of arrest and having a relationship with him. Knowing the rest that we have in him. Because we hear so many things from the church and we hear so many things as Christians of how we're supposed to live and how we feel like God wants us to be. I tried so hard, so many years, I just, I wanted to please God after everything that the Lord had done for me. And I'd always struggled with just such perfectionistic way of thinking, and especially in my spiritual life. And I just felt like I was never... being that person that God wanted me to be. And I felt upset by that deeply. And I kept failing and struggling with things, certain sins, etc. Things that the church or Christianity would encourage me to focus on and try to stop doing through my own efforts and my own strength. I didn't understand God was trying to teach me about rest. God was taking me back to this place of rest repeatedly. And I didn't understand. We're told that we're set free from the law, but a lot of times, to some extent, we're still looking at the law in some capacity or a form of the law. We're trying to look at all the things that we're supposed to do as Christians or we're supposed to stop doing it, and we try so hard to follow it. And often we try to do that through our own abilities, our own efforts, or partially our own abilities and our own efforts. And sometimes we'll just, we'll focus on our sin and all that we are not doing for God. Paul talks about how the law stirred up sin in him. The law is the strength of sin. The law is a schoolmaster meant to bring us to Christ. The law shows our sin. Gospel shows our Savior. Paul talks about in the book of Galatians how we've been set free from the law and talks about walking by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Walking by the flesh is in the works of the flesh, the works that we try to do through our own flesh. Walking by the Spirit is, is walking by His Spirit, right? We have received His Holy Spirit. It's being in that place of rest. What I find really interesting is when we are focusing on our sin, we may find that we actually are sinning more or struggling with something even more and, and wondering like why we can't stop but it's because the law stirs up sin in us because it was meant to bring us to Christ it was meant to show us that we can't save ourselves that we can't completely stop sinning That Jesus Christ came, fulfilled the law perfectly, bore all our sins, and died on the cross, and said, It is finished. He 
He tore the veil that once kept us separated. The Apostle Paul talks about what shall separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing in all of creation shall separate us from the love of Christ. Jesus went through everything he did. So that we would know the rest that we have in him. It talks about in the Bible that we may come boldly before the throne to obtain mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. We have been reconciled to God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been set free from the law. We see repeatedly in the Bible, it talk about rest all the time. Even Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I want to talk about being in that place of rest. And I want to first go into not to see yourself as this broken project that you think God sees you as that he sees his child he sees his child sees you. Even if that doesn't feel like it. And I really believe he invites us to rest. Because as I mentioned, this beautiful process happens, but a number of other things happen. You might find that the very things you're trying so hard to stop struggling with just fade. You might find that when you're in that place of rest, naturally the fruits of the Spirit will be developed because we're being filled by the Lord. It talks about love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self control are the fruits of the Spirit. You might find that when you're in that place of rest, you feel that sense of peace. You feel more joy. And the other fruits of the Spirit. Because it's the Lord doing that work in us. If we are looking at our own efforts, our own abilities, and trying to fix ourselves, thinking God sees us in that way, though, we don't come to that place of rest. We're trying to do things through our own efforts, our own abilities. Instead of just coming to the Lord as we can. So, I believe the Lord knows that the things that we may be struggling with, He wants us to encounter His love. It's his love that heals things in us, that reaches those places deep inside of us, those wounds that we've carried. And I say this as someone that used to struggle with depression for years. 
I say this as someone that used to struggle with suicidal thoughts for 10 years of my life. I didn't know if my life would ever not look like that. I didn't know if things would ever be different. I didn't know if God wanted my life to not be like that or if it could really truly be a reality for me because I had been struggling for so long and people will tell you to do all these things or all these things will help but let me tell you Jesus was the only person and the only thing that could heal that in me, that could bring restoration. And even when it didn't look like that was happening, right? God was healing parts of me. And that was happening in that place of rest. I had looked at myself as someone that needed to be fixed or needed to try harder. But God wanted to meet me in his love. There were times in my life where the pain that I felt just felt completely consuming and I wondered how I would even get through things. And God was the one that was mending and bringing restoration back to not only the shattered pieces of me, but the broken pieces of my life. And I want you to know that if you have looked at yourself as someone that needs to be fixed, because we may hear that from people in our life, we may hear that from society. But I want you to know that God doesn't look at you as an endless self reflection improvement project or a broken project that needs to be fixed, but that He wants to love you. He wants to show you the love that is found nowhere else. The power of his love that is the only thing that can reach those places deep inside us. And that he longs for you to have a rest. To take your burdens and your cares and your worries off your shoulders. To remind you of the rest that is found only in him. I hope that you would just know that you can come to God. You may not understand why we have been through certain things in our life. Maybe like me, you've questioned, does God love me or how could God love me if this happened? Maybe... Like me, you developed a lot of fear of God and being really afraid to come to God. You may not understand. You may have questions. You may feel fear. I really truly believe that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
I believe that God welcomes you, welcomes you with open arms. I believe that enemy wants to make you feel like he doesn't. It makes you want to make you feel like he doesn't love you and doesn't want you to know the rest that you have in him. Wants you to keep working and feeling like you need to earn God's love or God's favor. But I believe God longs to meet you in his love that he has open arms for you, reminding you to come his child. That you don't have to carry those burdens and those worries. He wants to take those from you. That he sees how weary you are. He sees how heavy it is. That he longs to give you rest. To know the rest in him. Not when you come to him that he is love. The Bible says God is love. That he longs to love you, to love those pieces of you that may feel broken, those pieces that you may have looked at like they need to be fixed, that he longs to meet you in his love. And I hope from this video, from this message, that you would just be able to sit at God's feet. To just be reminded of his love for you. That we can rest in his love. And to remind of the rest that we have in him. That it is in his word. He desires us. that you would be able to rest. Whatever you may be going through in your life. And stop seeing yourself. As there being something wrong with you or that you are a broken project or that you need to be fixed, but that you just come to God and experience his love. That you would know you are loved and you are cared about, even if you've never felt that way, that, that you would know that. So, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you are doing all right. God bless you.